Okay, before I sit down and film this video, I'm gonna have some lunch. I have been making this Hawaiian bowl. I first tried it at this brewery in my hometown and it is just so good that I decided to try to recreate it. And I literally made it four times in one week and I have a bunch of leftovers from it. I made it for a few of my friends this last weekend. So I'm gonna have that for lunch. I'll show you guys the components of it. And if you're curious, I'll make a video about the recipe on how to make it. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so the first thing I have here is just some brown rice and some pulled pork that I made. And then I throw on some uh, chopped up cabbage. And then I just threw on, I'm, I'm having a little taste of it now. Should probably finish chewing before I film and talk but this is a cilantro lime chili slaw and then I just threw on some hoisin sauce and some sweet chili sauce and then finally I topped it off with some green onions and some corn chips for some crunch and then at that point I just mix it all together and it's freaking delicious. Okay, well, that lunch was bomb. Please let me know in the comments below if you want me to give you guys the recipe because I will do a cooking video on it. I don't know if you know, but I used to do cooking videos. I've only done like three, I think, but it was something that I thought I was going to get into before I found recovery coaching. Uh, please don't go find them or do, you probably will since I already mentioned it. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to heal your relationship with exercise. This was something that was one of the last things I had to heal and it did take a lot of time and it was tricky. It was really tricky to navigate. So firstly, I wanna talk about what my relationship was like before, during, and after eating disorder recovery. I remember when I first got into actually exercising regularly was when I was training for track and cross country. And during that time, it was coming from such a healthy place. I mean, I didn't care about the calories that I burned. Um, I tracked my mileage, but that was for training purposes. I did have a different body type than a lot of the girls I was running with. I always have had like stronger, more muscular thighs and wider hips, whereas a lot of the girls I competed against were very skinny, slender, lean, relative to me. And that would sometimes bother me, but I never remember using training as a way to manipulate my body or to lose weight. I always ate when I was hungry um, and I was eating a lot during that time because I was training so much and I felt like I had a lot of energy and I genuinely enjoyed the training aspect. I mean, it was all just super duper fun. But then what ended up happening was I fell into disordered eating a little bit in high school, still running wasn't necessarily a part of that. It was mostly just about me controlling food. Where exercise became a really big issue was when my eating disorder came back in college. So during that time I was spending, I'm, I'm not going to say how much time I was spending at the gym, but it was a lot of time. My social life sort of went down the drain. I remember canceling plans because I knew if I stayed out too late, I wouldn't be able to get to the gym early in the morning. And I was so insecure about my body that I would try to go to the gym when it was least busy, which was super early in the morning. So there was no chance I was gonna stay out late or drink the night before. Uh, vacations were impossible and so anxiety inducing. Looking back, it makes me feel really sad, but I would, be so terrified to go on vacation because I wouldn't have access to a gym and I wouldn't know when I was going to be able to exercise and I remember that would just freak me out so much and I would be obsessively planning how I could sneak away and get a workout in and it took me out of the moment and it made it so I couldn't enjoy the vacation. I couldn't enjoy making memories with my family. Um, I, I couldn't enjoy food because I was thinking, oh, well, I can't exercise as hard while I'm here, so I'm just not going to eat as much. Or if I did eat, I felt extremely guilty because I didn't have a way to purge it, basically. And I also remember this one time where in my college town where I was living at the time, we had this huge winter storm and, you know, class was canceled and everything. It was hard to even walk outside. And I remember forcing myself to go for a run. And I just remember my knees and my hips hurting so much because there was like no traction on the ground so my feet were kind of sliding all over and it put me in pain 
for a few days after that and I'm already really prone to running injuries. So that was complete abuse to myself and just totally not okay and a complete representation of how I viewed exercise. It was this thing that if I didn't do it, I would be completely ruined. I would panic, I would freak out. Um, my self-worth would go down the drain. Not that I really had much to begin with. So it was very, very clearly excessive. And so I could go on and on about stories about how excessive I was and extreme things that I did. But maybe just from that little recap, maybe some of you can relate to that. And maybe you're hearing some things where it's like, oh yeah, I do that. Those are some generic red flags of you know excessive ex exercise that you can look out for but i'm going to cover more ways of figuring out if you're exercising excessively so that you can analyze your situation and find out for yourself if you don't already know so during recovery i had to completely stop exercising and that was really hard so i had to completely step back from it and i basically did like an all-in approach with exercise where i went all in on not exercising through some techniques that i'm going to discuss throughout this video i finally got to a place where i am now where now i exercise in a variety of ways and i switch it up all the time so now i'm in a place where i run a couple times a week if I feel like it, I do a lot of walking, um, I do some weightlifting and other forms of exercise that just randomly sound fun, whether it's playing a game with my sister or you know, playing badminton or rollerblading. And I used to only view exercise as this thing where it's like, it has to be really vigorous for a long period of time, it has to hurt, I have to burn a certain amount of calories in order for it to count and now, I'm very flexible and adaptable and I love moving my body and it genuinely feels so good. And it's no longer coming from this place of I'm doing it to manipulate how I look. I do it because it feels good and it's fun for me. I have found activities that make exercise and moving my body really, really fun. So how can we distinguish normal exercise from excessive exercise? So the first thing I talked about in the beginning of the video is are you obsessively planning it? Are you thinking days ahead, weeks ahead on how you're gonna be able to fit your workout in? And this is different from you know planning your workouts because I get there's a strategic aspect to it, especially if you're weightlifting. Yes, there is some planning that is good, but are you doing it to the point where it makes you anxious and you're doing it, you're planning it because if you miss it, you're gonna lose your mind. Another way you can identify obsessive planning is are you canceling plans? Do you actually feel like your exercise routine is flexible and adaptable? Does your world revolve around your exercise routine? or does your exercise routine revolve around your world? Do you feel guilt and shame if you can't exercise or if you miss an, a workout? Another thing to look out for is what is your inner monologue while you're exercising? Do you have self-loathing around it? Is it motivated by this negative drill sergeant telling you that you're gross and you're fat and if you don't exercise, you're a piece of shit? Do you have certain markers that make it count, like a calorie amount that you have to burn in order for it to count? or a duration of time that you have to do, or a level of pain that you have to reach. Like if it's not hard enough, if you're not dripping sweat, if you're not completely exhausted by the end of it, does it not count for you? So something that you can do is if it's becoming excessive and you feel like you are very disciplined in the way that you go about it, and I put discipline in quotation marks because really it's, it's not discipline, it's self-hatred and fear fueling this way of exercising that's excessive. So what you can do is you can take that discipline and rigidity that you're using to conform to the eating disorder or take that discipline and use it to be disciplined about not exercising. Use it to be disciplined about cutting yourself off if it's becoming excessive. So for example, something I would have to do when I first, so I took a break from exercise and then when I first started getting back into it, I would go for a run, for example, or I would go lift weights. And if during that time I started having thoughts like, oh, I'm burning this many calories, or oh, I'm earning my food for later, or I would have the negative drill sergeant in my head, I would stop immediately and I would take myself home. And I would say, nope, we're not doing this. If that's how you're gonna think during exercise, then there's gonna be these consequences. The consequence being you cannot exercise. So it was really me on learning conditioning that I had around exercise, I kind of had to treat myself as a toddler almost and set very clear boundaries with myself and say, no, not allowed. Come back when you have a different mindset around this. The goal here is to not make exercise this hard, strenuous, torturous thing. It's meant to be a release. It's meant to feel strengthening. And I don't mean like aesthetically strengthening. I mean like you feel strong and powerful and energetic. And yes, obviously you can push yourself. Like I do 
do push myself when I'm lifting weights because I want to actually be stronger. So I need to increase the weight or the reps or whatever every week that I lift weights. And that is hard, like it's difficult, but it's not coming from this place of like, you're worthless if you don't push yourself or this doesn't count unless you push yourself. And also know that rest is just as important as the exercise itself if you're trying to get health benefits from it. So literally your body needs to recover from whatever exercise you do in order for it to have benefits. Think of weightlifting. You can't build muscle unless you give it time to rest and build muscle because while you're weightlifting, those muscle fibers are being torn apart and they need time to rebuild themselves. Same with running. You need time to rest. You need to give your cardiovascular system rest and your muscular system rest in order to get stronger from it. So really make sure that you are allotting just as much time to exercise as you are to rest and recovery. So I talked about the all-in approach with coming back to exercise and some question I guess like, how do you learn to exercise in moderation? Well, you can use the all-in approach, like I said, where you completely stop exercising and then once you do some mindset work, you can ease back into it and then do that technique I talked about where you cut yourself off if the thoughts come back. Or what you can do if that, if it is just way too intense and you cannot handle getting rid of exercise completely, you can slowly dial it back. So each day or every couple days, you do a little bit less exercise until you finally get to a point where you've stopped and that still probably won't be easy and the dialing back won't be necessarily easy and it does take longer, but through that, it can kind of feel more approachable for people and more doable. Another thing is to look at your intention with exercise. Ask yourself, why am I doing it? So are you doing it to feel good and have fun or are you doing it to manipulate your body? Really be honest with yourself here. Another thing is you have to be flexible and adaptable. The problem with being so regimented about eating and exercise is that it's just not sustainable and you miss out on so many things in life when you approach it that way. So every time, you engage in exercise. I want you to ask yourself, is this coming from a compassionate, loving place or is this coming from an anxious, fear-based place? Again, be honest. So a really good question to ask yourself if you're trying to figure out how your relationship with exercise is, is ask if somebody told you that you can't exercise at all for the next week, what feelings and thoughts and emotions come up for you? Another thing you can do is change what you're listening to while you exercise. So for me, when I was excessively exercising, I would listen to really hardcore music and I would have songs at a certain cadence that I would run extra fast, no matter how badly my body was hurting or have music so aggressive that like I would push myself past what my physical limit should have been while weightlifting. And that caused a lot of injuries and fatigue. So I would suggest maybe listening to a podcast. Something that I did during my recovery is I would only listen to recovery podcasts while doing movement. And when I was getting back into movement, it was only recovery podcasts. And that's what helped me. But maybe for you, it's just something, some podcasts you enjoy, whether it's like science or music or art or politics, something that you can just, that's an actual interest for you that you can listen to that doesn't make you feel anxious and stressed and aggressive about exercise. So through these practices, exercise eventually did become more enjoyable for me. It became this loving, compassionate thing that I loved to do for myself. I would only measure exercise based on how good it made me feel. And I noticed that I started trying different types of exercise. Um, I was more flexible with my schedule. I wasn't afraid to go on vacations anymore. I wasn't afraid to hang out and party with my friends late at night. And I started also going to new places. So something that I did was when I first got back into exercise, I only walked and I didn't do any other form um, because I felt like walking and yoga were the most gentle forms that I could do. So I noticed I would start walking to places that I've never been before. Um, I was just, it felt like a meditation while I was walking or doing yoga rather than uh, a form of torture. And now I'm at a point I will only do exercise that feels good for me. Something that I hear a lot is, well, Anna, I exercise and it makes me feel all of these great things still. Like I still might have a disordered relationship with it, but I still have all of these benefits. Does that mean it's bad? So we're not gonna be able to figure out if it's disordered when it's present. The only way we're gonna figure out if it's disordered is in the absence of exercise and what feelings and thoughts come up when you don't get to have it. So something I want you to try is I want you to start tracking how you feel around exercise. And this is something that I do with clients is 
if they're gonna do exercise, they will take notes on the thoughts, emotions, feelings, body sensations that they have before, during, and after the exercise. They write down the date and time that they did the exercise, they write down the duration, they write down what type they did. They also write down what motivated them beforehand. And then they'll rank out of 10 the enjoyment level. So one being like they didn't enjoy it at all. It was completely disordered. They were berating themselves the whole time. It was coming from a place of hate. It was torturous. It was unenjoyable. And then 10, it was like, I loved it. I had so much fun. I was not motivated by disordered thoughts at all. My body felt so good. I felt centered. I felt grounded. And so for every time you exercise, use that form of logging so you can really take a look at what is my mindset around exercise and where can I make improvements or where am I making improvements already? The first thing I'll say is if you are in the midst of struggling with exercise and you've never taken a break before and you're in recovery, you're in the depths of it, try to stop completely exercising for one and really see what comes up for you, what thoughts and feelings come up for you what fears come up for you. And then if that feels like it's too intense, try the dialing back approach. Try cutting it down by like 15 or 20 minutes every single day or every couple days until you get to a point where you're not exercising at all so that it's more approachable for you. And then when you get back into movement, start small. Start with something like walking. Listen to a podcast that you enjoy. Try yoga because yoga is all about this mind and body relationship and it's a great way to get connected to your body through movement. And the last thing I wanna say is running is one of the number one contributors to relapsing. And I think that's really important to note. Running is a very common form of movement for people who are engaging in a disordered eating. So I want you to keep that in mind. Really be careful. And maybe it's a different kind of movement for you. Maybe it's hit workouts, maybe it's swimming, but running seems to be a very common one. So please be aware when it comes to that. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. If you're struggling with your relationship with exercise, please reach out, please reach out to me. Um, I can give you, I'm gonna link below a couple of Instagram accounts that are body positive, anti-diet, recovery focused, and they talk about exercise and how to have a healthy relationship with exercise. But otherwise, just know that this is a process. It takes practice, it takes persistence. It's not easy, but it's worth it because you end up getting to a place where you have this healthy relationship with exercise and you feel connected to your body. So just know if, if you're struggling with this and you're finding it really hard, it is worth it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Have that vision of yourself, that person who it has such a good relationship with food and body and they have this freed up mental space and they have this energy and they're enjoying life and they feel fulfilled and they feel confident in themselves. That is the version of yourself that you're working towards right now. Every time you have a success, you're becoming more of that vision. If you have any suggestions for videos you want in the future, please leave them in the comments below. I think I'm gonna be doing a recipe video for my next video, probably for that Hawaiian bowl that I showed you guys at the beginning. And otherwise, thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I'll talk to you guys soon.